Hi everybody, welcome back. This is instructor Phil Dimitriotis and I wanted to do a demo for my students today. We've been having the discussion talking about one point perspective, two point perspective, what is three point and how does that tie into five point perspective. So let's go through some basics here. I thought the easiest way to, to demo this, talk about it, is to open up a 3D software application. So I have Maya opened here and I made a couple really rough models and I want to go in here and show you some of the differences. So if I come in here right now and if I set my camera up right here and I level off, this is basically one point perspective where I have one vanishing point that's right here in the center and I have the tops of my buildings receding to that vanishing point. Um, my I have a horizon line that's actually right here. Technically this horizon on the ground should extend out, but for this demo I just did a quick model of this. Even if I pull out further back like this and line up, okay, this will make a little bit more sense. So in this image right here, it might look like this is my horizon. It's not. My horizon line is going to be that straight line where I can't see on top of an object and I can't see underneath a, an object. And if you look, about right here I can't see on top of these objects right there so this is actually where my horizon line is okay now my my point of view that I'm looking at this the ground plane happens to end right here and that's an easy fix if I came over here to Maya and if I were to grab that ground plane and then stretch it out and then if I came back to that same camera move there we go so I'm back to the same move Do you see what's happening as I stretch out that ground plane it's now raised quite a bit so there's a huge difference just understand where the horizon line is and, and again the best way to figure that is you can't see on top of something and you can't see underneath it okay so that's one point now common question just to remind you guys if I have this view right here I get this all the time from students Phil can I have one point perspective and at the same time same time have two point perspective absolutely you can because what would happen is an example I like the example of a library okay and we could take a look at that in just a second but let's just start with buildings first because they're basic all my buildings are in one point perspective and that's pretty common why because a lot of streets and a lot of our western cultures are built on one point perspective in terms of things being plumb and on a 90 degree angle so if I were to take a building right here and if I had a building that was turned like this this building is now in two point perspective so everything else in this image is in one point perspective okay so in one point perspective the sides are converging to one vanishing point same with the bases but then uh, the other axes which is let's call we'll say x y and z axes right our x axes in red right here runs this way our y goes up and down and then the z depth is running towards the vanishing point so the x axes are all going to be parallel to each other and that's what determines one point perspective but look what happens here once i turn that building i have axes going back here to a vanishing point these are going to a vanishing point and so on okay now um, now let's go over really quick. I'm going to show you another example of the two point. Okay, so what happens when we come into a city layout and let's come in here again, take a look like this. We have a city that's like this. So now basically all I've done is I've taken all the buildings and they happen to be rotated. Since they're rotated, this is a two point perspective view. So if you look here, I have um, the sides of this city excuse me, this building receding back here to vanishing point, and then I have this sides of the building receding back to vanishing point, okay? So that's two point perspective there. So there's two options. I could still have, if I touch my ground plane, it's still flat going across here. That's fine. So there's sort of two options that you can have. You can have the drawing and all the city buildings turned at two point perspective, which is, you know, what we have here, or you can come back here, you can have things in one point perspective, or what we could do is if I wanted to I could select the camera turn the camera like this and now everything goes into two-point perspective okay do you see that so I just rotated the camera it's the same principle either way okay now what happens how do we get to three-point perspective well there's a little trick about three-point perspective and um, mentioned that in class to you guys as students let me go ahead and select all these building tops really quick here and grab some vertices really fast here in Maya so in three-point perspective, the key to it is we want to have enough convergence that we can look down on a particular object, okay? So here I am looking at my buildings in one point, okay? Once I come over like this and I start to look downward, you can see what's happening now is I have enough distance 
between the top of my buildings and the base of my buildings for them to be converging to a third vanishing point. So let's take a look at this. Now this confuses students sometimes because you can actually have what looks like three-point perspective, but there's actually only two vanishing points inside the drawing, and this is a good example of that, okay? So look right here. All of my lines are, uh, my x-axis lines are horizontal to each other right now. Do you see that? This one's horizontal to this one, but the, the y-axis, excuse me, I should say, um, the, my y axis is going down here, my x is going across. So we should say the z depth, the z axis right here is receding back to a vanishing point. Same with this edge, that's going back to a vanishing point. So even though this, there's technically only two vanishing points in this image, I still like to refer to it as three point perspective. And to be technical about it, it's actually four point perspective because if I pull out far enough and if I was looking at the earth, what would happen is I would have a vanishing point down here where the buildings are converging to. I have the top of the buildings converging to another vanishing point here. I have the sides of this building converging to another vanishing point back here. And then I have this side converging to another point there. And I'll show you a good example of that because if I come over here, I basically have a miniature version of the earth that's set up here. So if I come over here and I zoom in, okay, and if I get my angle correct on this and I look up, okay, this is a good example of when I could see what's happening. And this is when we start to branch into five point perspective. So when do we have five point perspective? Well, if we're up really high and if we're looking down on any type of surface that might have a spherical basis to it, it could be a hill, it could be a mountain, or even looking at our, at our own earth. Now, the only problem here with this sample that I'm showing you is the subject matter, which are the buildings in brown here that are a rough mock-up, they're very large for the size of the earth, okay? So imagine if we wanted to zoom in, okay? If we zoomed into the earth and we were like this, like super close, okay? We know our earth is round, but if we zoomed in super close and we're really close up, we would basically have this perspective right here, if that makes sense, okay? Because if I zoomed in really close and was at ground level, okay, oops, let me lower my buildings again. So if I zoomed in and was at ground level looking at my sphere, this is basically the view I would have, which is basically a one-point perspective view. If my camera turns a little bit, I get a two-point perspective view because now I have my X and Y axes at 90 degree angle to each other, okay? And this one's receding back to another vanishing point. This one's receding over here to another vanishing point, right? If I tilt my camera, so the discussion that we had was understanding a really important term called an angle of view, okay? Um, some people call it a stationary point. Some people call it a viewing angle. Um, some people call it a perspective view. I like to refer to it as an angle of view. And what an angle of view is, is this, is that if I'm looking at something inside one point perspective, if my camera turns just slightly, I've now changed the angle of view to two point perspective. And if I take my camera and rotate it down more, I'm now watching buildings converge away from me and now I've introduced three point perspective into my, my design phase, okay? And that's really important So um, for us to understand because as students, you know, if you're gonna work as a storyboard artist, you have to be able to understand how to storyboard out and draw up certain perspectives and different angles of view inside your boards to indicate what's matching in a sequence to a particular action. So that's a really good exercise. If you want to learn more about perspective, go pull up a couple of your favorite movies. And what you can do is examine when do you see establishing shots? When do you see the use of one point perspective, two point perspective, and then when do you see three point perspective? Um, a great example is comic books. If you go look at a lot of comic art, there's a lot of action, there's a lot of heavy movement. You're gonna see angles that are gonna be pitched like this. And you're gonna see angles where we're here and we're looking up, okay, like so. Okay, now, let, let's go back. Let me jump back here for a second and talk about three-point perspective, okay? So we talked about technically when we're up here and we look down. So here's one of the problems students have sometimes is they come in, they have a two-point perspective drawing that looks like this, and then they angle down. And they're like, yep, it's in three-point. Well, not technically, and there's a reason for that, okay? Technically, Part of this drawing might not 
quite be in three point yet because all we've done is we have a, draw, a view in two point and then we're looking down a little bit. So one of the secrets to having that third vanishing point is having enough distance in what I call the Y axis. So if we look at the height of our building, the height of our building needs to be substantial enough, okay? Let me show you a, a, an example of when this doesn't work. So I'm gonna take the tops of my buildings right now. I'm gonna drop them pretty low like this. So if I'm here and I'm just like sort of, I'm at two point and then I'm looking down, this isn't quite a three point shot yet because I don't have enough convergence happening from point A here to point B to indicate there's a huge depth happening in the buildings because my buildings are too short. So the issue is not the perspective. The issue in this is the subject matter right now. Okay, the subject matter that I have that you're looking at here, the buildings aren't high enough. So how do we fix that? If you're going to be doing a shot, it's going to be inside a particular board angle or, or you know, or a, a sequence or a layout design, environmental design, whatever it's going to be, you have to be able to go in there and, and you might have to over exaggerate a little bit one of those principles. Okay, so if I make these buildings a little bit taller like so, then I come over here, okay, and look, you can absolutely see the three point perspective that's happening in this shot. So let's just take a look at that. You have you have this right here converging back over here. You have this side going this way. Then you have the, the, the heights of the building converging back to a vanishing point. So what I'm gonna do here is why don't we render a couple of these shots and then we can later pull them back up inside Photoshop and draw on top of them and talk about what's happening with that perspective and how you draw that grid and get an understanding for that. Okay, maybe that'll be a part two. So what I'm gonna do really quick here is, um, while I have this up, let me just go over here. I'm gonna hit render. I'm gonna render this scene. There it is, it's rendered. So I'm gonna save this to a file that I have down on my desktop here. Give me one second here. Let me just save it up here. And where did we go? I'll just put it, actually let's create a new folder. New folder, we'll call it perspective. Okay, perspective renders. I'm gonna open that. I'm gonna go ahead and save this file right now as a, oops, let's save it as a PSD, so it's there and ready for us. Actually, that's weird, I'm not seeing that option in here, oh, there it is, I just need my glasses, there we go. So let's call this render number one. I'm gonna hit save, okay, there it is, I have that backed up, okay. Now, so let's come back here, just another view, because I had this discussion with a student, they're like, well, how, what if I have a one point perspective view, which is this, that's one point perspective right there, right? But what happens then when I angle downward, I'm looking down, is that three point or is that two point? Well, it's part of three point, the, it, the image isn't termed. We have two key vanishing points that we're seeing in here. So let me get that angle in here like this. I'm gonna go ahead and render that because that'd be really important to talk about a little bit later. There we go, that's done. Okay, so let me save this file. Let's go save image again. Uh, there we go, we have it saved. Now I can save that as number two. Save, okay. Let's take that same image then, we'll just rotate the camera a teeny bit like this. Okay, all right. And let's go back in here and then do the same thing. It's, all right, let's save that image now. It's number three. Okay. And number three, save. Okay, now with that done, you know, part of the discussion of this demo was originally around what is an angle of view and how does that work? Well, a, a, an easy way for me to demonstrate that is to take a camera and to show you and to go inside what happens in a particular environment when the camera view is changing because that's like your angle of view. Um, the example I gave in classroom the other day, hold on a second, let me create a camera really quick here in Maya. Okay, create camera. There it is. So let me bring that in here. make it a little bit larger so we can see a little bit more. Okay, I need to spin this camera around so we're looking in, oops, in the direction of our buildings here. Okay, there we go. Turn this to 180. Okay, there, that's done. Okay, so now I have my camera, okay? So some of my students didn't quite understand what this angle of view is. So what I'm gonna do really quick here, I'm gonna go to panels, I'm gonna go to layouts, and I'm gonna go to two panels split side by side, okay? And what's cool about this is I have this camera selected in this panel, I could come over here and tell it, look through selected item. So there we go. Okay, so what's cool about this, I'm gonna open up this frame a little bit. So 
What's neat about this is as I move this camera, you see what you're seeing in this view? You're seeing the perspective view of that camera being moved in. Okay, so this is what your angle of view is. Okay, and hold on, let me adjust one more thing in here. Let's pretend, so the example that I was starting to tell you about is I gave this in my class the other day. I was discussing, talking to students about if I was, how my angle of view would change inside the classroom as I looked at a variety of different objects. Okay, hold on a second here. Sorry, I lost my hotkeys in Maya. In 2016 is a real pain in the butt to get hotkeys back in. Okay, here we go. So I have that done. Okay, so now let's come back here. Click on my camera. So basically, if we take a look here, sorry, I lost my key, main hotkeys here. There we go. So I, I gave this example. Imagine if these green buildings here were, were desks and I was in my class. So if I was in my class, classrooms are going to be laid out in a plum manner. Everything's going to be on 90 degrees with four walls around you, right? Unless you're in a round classroom. But I gave this example to my class that if I'm standing here and I'm looking at you and your desks, I can see on top of most of your desks. And then what happens if I then stand on a ladder? I can now see above your heads because I've raised my angle of view. I've raised my point of view. I'm now looking up higher. Now, my, my point of view that I'm on a ladder is higher, but there's still, if I could take away the wall in the classroom, there's still a dedicated horizon line that our planet exists on. Okay, sometimes that's a little battle between artists as they say, oh, that's my horizon line versus what is my, my the point of view horizon line, which is coming from my eyes inside the illustration. That's a whole other discussion. But what I wanted to point out was if I'm up right here, and then if I come over, and this is where my angle of view changes, is that most of everything we see is in one point and two point until we look down or look up at objects. So if I come over here and I look down on my objects, like this, and I turn my camera down, and if I basically pull my camera up a little bit, now I'm elevated above them, I'm looking down on them, and you can see I'm starting to get um, some slight curves here that are going into a third vanishing point, okay? If I bring that a little bit closer, and I, and oops, and if I pull my camera up, hold on a minute, it's not doing it, there we go. If I pull, hold on, I'm trying to get it to pull up. There it goes. Now if I pull my camera up, push it back a little bit, and then, and then increase that downward angle and even more, it's definitely going to increase the third vanishing point that's happening in there, okay? And that's how my angle of view has changed, okay? So let's talk about, that's a basic down shot. Let's go back real quick and talk about what happens on an up shot. Let me see if I can go back and raise my buildings back up. There we go. So what, oops, what's going to happen in, in our up shot? Okay, hold on a minute here. Sorry, I have a little bit of a delay there. There we go. Let me get that camera. I'm going to turn this camera back in to what, 180 degrees. And then I'm going to come over here and put this back at negative zero. There we go. So now our camera is back in, in straight one point perspective shot. Okay. So look at what happens. What if I'm in downtown? I lived in Chicago for a little bit when I worked for Big Idea Studios. What if I'm downtown and then I come up to a building and then I look upward? Okay. There we go. Here's the other example on how we see three-point perspective. So we can see objects receding away from us, ending up in, in three-point perspective. Now, if I drop my camera downward, I hit the ground plane. So, you know, this would be an ideal view that somebody would see if they were in a city view. And what I can do is move this camera back and forth. Okay, and you can see what I would see if I walked sideways. And then if I walked further into my city, okay, I can see my buildings like so. Okay, they're converging upward to a vanishing point because I'm looking up. So again, when I look up at something and the, and the object is longer, there's going to be more re recession. The, the, there's more length in the, in the y-axis. Therefore, it's receding to another vanishing point. Okay, with that said and done, let's come back here. Let's go back to this. Okay, and the problem that some of my students were understanding is what happens when I'm here? What happens when, you know, how does five-point perspective work? So, again, five-point perspective is pretty much the basics. So there's five vanishing points. You know, one over here, one over there, one in the middle, one down here, and one up here. However, though, the only key difference in this is the size and the scale relationships of the subject matter that you're looking at. Okay? So to try to describe this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up two windows again. I have my perspective view. And I'm going to come over here and say look through selected. Okay? So let me get this camera in place. 
Okay, uh, let me get the camera rotated properly here one second. Put this to zero. And let's get this to negative 90. There we go. So now I can come back over here and I can come in and look. All right, now, hold on a minute. I'm going to hide this stuff so I don't see my little world that we created back here. Hide that. Okay, cool. Now we're here. So now watch what happens in this window here in the large window. As I come over and I move my camera, okay, I can take renders of particular sections that I might see. So if I zoom in to this right now, and if I bring my camera over like this, okay, this is like a traditional three-point perspective down shot right here, okay, where I have, um, now, hold on a minute, I need to raise it up a little bit more. There we go. Now that it's raised up, you can see if I have a frame in here, okay, um, I could see these buildings are sitting to a point back here. These buildings are sort of going straight right now, but there's a definite third point right here in the middle of my frame. These buildings were sitting down to it. Now, like I mentioned, you know, the scale of these buildings are really huge on here. So the scale is going to dictate part of what your three-point perspective drawing looks like, okay? So this is what I was talking to my students about that they couldn't quite grasp, is I can be looking at this, and if I change my angle of view, meaning if I'm up high let's say on a, um, a a satellite or a balloon there's that awesome Red Bull video where the guy jumps out of a satellite that's up at the very height let me see if I can pull that up for you really quick and you'll see what I'm talking about here okay one second while we have this up all right cool let's come over here and let's go to Red Bull dive from uh, let's say Earth See if it comes up here. Aha! Here's that view. Okay, check this out. Red Bull Stratus. So I'm going to pull this up. Okay. All right, let's skip the commercial. Hold on a minute. We'll let that skip. And then we'll come back in here and I'm going to show you this video really fast. One second, guys. Sorry. Here it is. So look, here's an astronaut in space who's going to jump. Oh, this would be awesome to do, right? He's going to free fall from the edge of the earth. He's 128,000 feet above. So when he comes out, see what he's looking at? So when I always get that question, why do we have to draw, you know, something in, in five point? Why do I have to understand how five point works? Well, he's about to step out of here and he's going to jump off down to the earth, right? The gravity is going to pull him back down. Look at how he's seeing the planet. So obviously scales of, of, of a building are huge right here, okay? Um... Hold on, there's another video right here that's a head cam footage where we're looking back down on an earth. So if you're a storyboard artist, and if you're working on a Star Wars movie, you're story storyboarding out a sequence where TIE fighters are going to fly into a Death Star, or you're up high on a building and you're looking down over a series of other buildings, um, you, that's when you're going to start to see a curvature to the earth because our earth is round, okay? And that's when this is going to take place. So let's watch. This guy's about to come out. Boy, this guy's crazy. Look at that. You can jump out of a satellite. Look, so look at that. That's five point perspective. We're looking straight down at the Earth, okay? Where are the vanishing points? Look at this. Handlebars go to vanishing point right there. Another vanishing point way off the page. Another vanishing point way off the page, okay? Uh oh, you missed it. Isn't that crazy? Uh oh, getting lag because the recorder's on. Let's see if he catches up here. Right there. Sorry, guys. I'm screwing this up. Come on, jump. Anyway, it's frozen, probably because of the recorder going. But you get the idea, right? Here, there's another example here. This is a uh, head cam footage from another jump, right? So, hold on a minute. I got to get that for Christmas, by the way. Put it on my dirt bike. So go off a jump. I can see how I went. Okay, check it out here. So this is again 19 and a half miles up in the air. Let's fast forward this. There we go. So now, you know, 24.2 miles above the Earth, someone's going to jump out. And anytime we're looking down on the Earth in that particular angle, we're going to see it in five point perspective. We're not going to see buildings, per se, because the scale relationship is very small. Okay? So let's get to the point. Come on. Let's see somebody jump here. There he goes. Come on. 
I'm in a demo here, buddy. Jump out. That's just crazy, right? So he's literally on the edge of space. If he were to go any higher, he'd be in the atmosphere and he'd burn up through going back in. What if he just tripped and stumbled and like pulled his lifeline? No, right. <laughs> anyway, so come on, let's see. I think he has a camera attached on him. So let's just be patient here for a second. Get a good three point perspective shot. I could never be a NASA because I'd be like, just do it, just go. Stop waiting, there he goes. I think he has a little camera on him that's going to show a couple cool angles here in a minute. No cut from that. Yep, there it is. Look at that. How awesome is that? Look at him fall. Look at that perspective right there. Oh, yeah. Diving in. Look, there's some buildings down there. Okay, see the curvature of the earth. You're going to be seeing... If you were to go closer and closer, some of those buildings, if they got larger, they'd be in five-point perspective. All right, let's see if we can zoom ahead here. Gosh, he's just going to fall forever, right? All those miles. What if he accidentally, like, pulled a shoot? I wonder how many Gs he's pulling right there, too. So look at that. Now you can see some more curvature of the Earth. You're going to be able to see some buildings because the subject matter is going to start to get larger. Anyway, sorry for that distraction. My point here is that when you look at the buildings that I have right here, okay, um, there's a little bit of a variation here that's happening because the buildings are too large. But I just did this as a quick demo. But I want you to see the difference that if I'm in here, okay, and then if I take this camera, so we're talking about angle of view. So imagine if... I come in here really quick, and if my camera is like really up close, then what happens if I take my camera and I turn it, and I start to turn it back, okay, oops, a little bit of music coming in there, look, and if I turn it back this way, and look, see what happens, now I'm changing my angle of view, I'm rotating my camera, I'm in a different place on that curve, okay, just as if I was an airplane, so imagine if this was some type of a supersonic fighter that was flying by like this, and pass through everything, right? That curve's gonna change. Now, if I wanted to in Maya, I could animate that camera coming through, but the point of this is for you to be able to see what we call an angle of view. How you can be looking at a particular object and you can be looking in a down shot, and then how if your camera changes, or better yet, if your head changes, if your view changes. If you look this way, look at that, you're now looking to one side. Now looking to another side, you're changing parts of the perspective that you're looking at, okay? This right here, if you've ever had the chance to go on top of like a really tall building, this type of shot with the scale a little bit smaller, this is what you see if you're looking down from like a shot of the Sears Tower or the Chicago Tower, okay? So let me show you that image really quick to help explain part of Five Point Perspective. Okay, welcome back. What I did really quick is I just paused because I wanted to bring up these photos here in Photoshop to show you some examples. So here's a great example. I think this is New York right here where we're looking over a ton of different buildings. So obviously we're up pretty high. Um, now, there's a whole discussion, a whole other argument, what happens when you put a filter on top of a lens that has a little bit of a flare or a bend to it known as a fisheye lens, right? This is what you're gonna have. But also if you get up high enough at the right angle, you can start to see a little bit of that curvature happening. Now here, I do feel it's being uh, way over accelerated, okay? But this gives you a good I idea. This is the scale being much smaller, looking at a spherical effect with buildings on it in perspective. Okay, let's take a look at another example here. Okay, here's an example of Vegas, right? So here, what's sort of neat, you can see a little bit of a bend going across that horizon here in the back, just a little bit, right? And if you look at this building, this building has a straight axis line. Go ahead and let me come over here and let's switch to a blue so I can draw on top of it so you can see exactly what's sort of taking place. Okay. Um, hold on. 
the sentient pen's missing. Let me use mine. There we go. All right, so if I come over here and look, now it's, it's really minor, but it is here. Okay, let me show it to you. So look, if I draw a line down the center of this guy right here, hold on, my brushes have changed again, great. Okay. There we go. So if I draw a line down the top right here and look look at that straight line, you see it turning? Look at the side of this building right here. Okay. And then look at the side of this building. These are all converging downward to a third vanishing point. Okay, so this is an example of that. And if you look over here, the camera is lightly picking up just a light curvature. Do you see it right there? It's very light, but look at what's happening right here. We're up high, we're sort of looking down, and again, I know this can be a little bit of the lens thing. Look, this building is converging this way to another vanishing point off the page. The side of this building is going back this way to another vanishing point. So when you start to get multiple vanishing points and you've changed your angle of view and you're looking down on an object, that's where you're going to start to get five-point perspective, or not just five-point, but you're going to get perhaps three-point perspective. Um, or even sometimes like four and the difference is is that you're actually you know three-point perspective is when we're looking at a particular part of the sphere okay and so when we go back here and we take a look at our Maya set if we get in here at the right angle we're gonna be able to see um, and if I have my subject matter smaller which are the buildings there you're gonna be able to see sort of a three-point perspective starting to happen and I want you to understand why that happens okay so if we come back here here's another drawing excuse me another photo we can do a drawing on top of it really quick just come back and just take a look at a couple of the lines that are here that's why if you want to be a concept artist you want to get into animation you want to be really good at understanding perspective you have to be able to look at these different perspectives and do traceovers and you can because the answers are here if you want to spend time doing the work look at this street right here it goes way back here boom to a vanishing point right there so if I zoom back into my image, look at my building right there. It's going back there. That's going back here. So we know that there's a vanishing point right back here. If I come back, look at the sides of my building. See that? We're seating back there. Okay, so I have, where are my vanishing points on this? Well, I mentioned this a little bit earlier. We're looking right now, if we add that sphere, we're basically looking at a shot right here on the sphere. Okay, so technically we're only going to see we have VP1 right here. And then we have another vanishing point way down off the page, which is the center vanishing point of the sphere. And then these are pretty much, I, I mean, there's a light recession starting to happen where it's starting to curve. But from this particular angle on the sphere, we're not seeing these go completely off to another vanishing point yet. So as one of my students put it, um, well, that's a one-point perspective drawing in three-point. Well, that's a way to look at it. It's a one-point perspective down shot. That's another way to possibly describe it as well. Okay, but what's key is that you understand you have a spherical sphere here that has five vanishing points, and this particular shot is us zoomed in right here on the frame. Okay, that's what's important, and the reason why we can see these buildings is because the scale of the subject matter, the scale meaning the height relationships is much smaller. Therefore, we can see, look at that, hundreds and thousands of buildings all back in here, and we can see it receding back, okay? And that was the only difference when I did my little demo here in, in Maya. You can't quite, my building scale is a lot larger. So if I took the time to go in that sphere, and it would take a lot of time to do that to make the building smaller, you would see that same effect happening. But what's important is that you understand how this right here is your as a camera that can come in okay that's an angle of view i can bring that camera into my environment i can move it around anywhere okay so anyway to wrap this up really quick here okay just to sort of go back on what we were talking about here let's go to display show all okay so um let's go back to my perspective view here all right so basically if i zoomed in let me hide that camera Oops, I didn't mean to do that. What happened there? There we are. We're in perspective view. No, we're not. There's our perspective view. So basically, if I come into my sphere, and if I zoomed in here and my buildings were smaller, okay, and if I drop my camera at a low angle right here looking this way, that's the same principle of me being right in here in a one-point perspective shot. 
okay? It's valuable that you understand one point, two point, three point, and how that all works in relationship to this, to five point perspective, and what you're seeing and where you're seeing it and how it affects um, your drawing. Because if you're gonna be a board artist, you're gonna have to be able to draw this out of your head and not always be able to go open up Maya to understand something. And the same thing being a concept artist. You know, if you have to crank out a piece of work in an hour and it's a and it's a downshot on a two-point perspective city, you're gonna be in a three-point perspective environment and there's nothing you can do, and you have to be able to map that out really quick and figure out how it's working. Okay? Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. Let me know if you like this demo and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.